Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna look at uses of radiation. So let's get started. It says here that there are many applications of nuclear radiation, such as in medicine, in the home, and in industry. So we're going to look at three uses of radiation in medicine, one use of radiation in the home, and one use of radiation in industry. And we'll look at them in this order. So the first one we'll look at is radiotherapy. And it says here that high energy radiation, i.e. gamma rays, can be fired at abnormal cancer cells to kill them and prevent the cancer from spreading. This is called radiotherapy. The radiation is focused on the cancer cells and fired from different angles. This causes maximum damage to the cancer cells while keeping the damage to the normal cells to a minimum. So here's a picture of radiotherapy. So we've got our three gamma sources here at different angles and they're focusing high energy gamma rays on this cancerous tumour here. So the reason they fire from different angles is so that all of the energy can be focused on the point of interest. That means that the cells throughout here, the cells here and the cells here are going to be exposed to minimum damage because you want those healthy cells to remain healthy. So at this point, you want the maximum damage to be caused. And so the energy from this gamma ray, this gamma ray and this gamma ray will add up to then try and kill the cancerous cells here. Next, we have radioactive tracers. Radioactive tracers can be injected into the body and monitored around the body as they emit gamma rays. The radiation dose is at a safe enough level to be injected into the blood and has a short half-life, that's something you'll learn about later on, so that it only remains radioactive for the duration of the procedure. So a short half-life would be something like six hours, so that when you go into hospital in the morning, you get injected with this radioactive tracer, and by the time you leave hospital later that day, the radiation inside your body is gonna be at a safe enough level for you to go home and live your life normally. As the tracer travels around your body, it builds up at points where there is a blockage in the blood or overactivity of blood. And the reason there will be a build up where there's overactivity is because cancer cells and cancerous tumours tend to use up lots of energy and lots of the body's resources and that's because they're going to try and grow at a faster rate than normal healthy cells. And the build up of tracer decays quickly and emits gamma rays which penetrate out of the body. A special gamma camera is then positioned over the patient to detect these gamma rays and electrical signals from the camera build up an image on a computer screen to show areas of interest. So this way you should be able to see areas where there is a build up of the tracer and therefore areas where there might be a blockage in an artery for example, or a cancerous tumour. So here's a picture of the setup. You don't need to know about all the parts of the gamma camera, but there's a person lying down inside a gamma camera. They would have the radioactive tracer flowing through their body and then emitting gamma rays, and only gamma rays that are actually parallel to this thing called a lead collimator pass through. And these can then hit a scintillator, like a sodium iodide scintillator, and produce a little flash of light. And then just like we saw in the scintillation counter for radiation detectors, the flash of light can be converted into an electrical signal and that can produce an image on a computer for us. So all you need to be aware of is that at the blockage points or the points of tumours, the tracer will build up and emit lots of gamma rays which will then be detected by a gamma camera and can produce a picture to show you where these areas are. The last medical use of radiation is sterilising medical instruments. It says here that after use, medical instruments are washed in very hot water and then resealed in plastic wrapping. But very hot water and soap is not going to be enough to kill off all the bacteria that is on your surgical instruments. And if you think about it, if the instruments are used on one person's body and then need to be used on someone else's body, then you really want them to be as clean as possible before you do that, so that you're minimising the risk of transferring bacteria and diseases and so on to patients. Gamma rays are fired through the plastic wrapping to kill off any bacteria that remains on the instrument. The instrument then stays sterile until the package is opened. So here's our plastic wrapping and the syringe inside and the fire gamma rays through it in order to kill off any remaining bacteria and that's going to sterilise the medical instrument. Next we have a use of radiation in the home, which is smoke alarms, and it says that most smoke alarms contain a source of alpha radiation, for example an americium 241 source to detect smoke. The alpha particles pass between two charged metal plates, causing air particles to ionise, i.e. split into positive and negative ions. So here's a picture of two metal plates, and the air particles will be inside the two metal plates. 
So here's our americium 241 source and it will be emitting alpha particles into here. So the alpha particles passing between these two plates will cause the air particles to ionize. And this causes the formation of positive and negative ions. So you've got your positive ions in red and your negative ions in blue there. Just like we saw for the Geiger Muller tube in the detecting radiation video, the ions are attracted to the oppositely charged metal plates causing a current to flow. So here we have our positive ions that would be attracted to the negative plate and our negative negative ions that would be attracted to the positive plate and that will cause a current to flow and this current will continue to flow because you're always going to have air particles between the plates and the alpha source is always going to be emitting alpha particles so you're going to have continuous ionization there a continuous current flow and remember the current flow is there because of the movement of charge and remember movement of charge is just an electrical current but here's the important part when smoke enters between the plates so here's our purple smoke particles some of the alpha particles are absorbed, causing less ionization to take place. This means that a smaller than normal current flows, causing the alarm to sound. So it's this decrease in current flow that is detected that is triggering an alarm to sound. Lastly, we have a use of radiation in industry, which is detecting leaks or blockages in underground pipes. It says here that radiation can be used as a tracer in industry in much the same way as in medicine. And the reason this is useful is because it can cost a lot of money to dig up underground pipes. So a gamma emitting source is introduced into an underground pipe with a suspected leak or blockage. So imagine introducing a gamma source which is going to flow along this underground pipe. At the point of the leak or blockage, there will be either a build up or a shortage of radiation. By passing a detector over the ground, the rise or fall in emitted radiation can be detected without having to dig up the pipe. So if you have a radiation detector, i.e. a geiger muller tube, and pass it over the ground, then you should be able to detect either a drop in the radiation levels where there's been a leak, or an increase in the radiation levels where there's been a build-up or a blockage. And that way you can detect a blockage or a leak without having to physically dig up the pipe, and that's going to save you a lot of money. So just to summarise our five uses of radiation, we've got our three medical uses here, our use in the home, and then the use in industry. So radiotherapy, first of all, Gamma rays are fired from different angles to focus on abnormal cancer cells and kill them. Ideally, maximum damage is caused to the cancerous cells, whilst damage to the healthy cells is kept to a minimum. Then we have radioactive tracers. So a radioactive tracer is injected into the body. The tracer builds up at points of blockage or overactivity, emitting gamma rays which can be detected using a gamma camera. Sterilising medical instruments. Medical instruments are washed with very hot water and then resealed in plastic packaging. Gamma rays are fired through the packaging to kill off any bacteria that remains. Next we have smoke alarms which contain a source of alpha radiation. Alpha particles passing between two charged metal plates cause air particles to ionise. When smoke enters between the plates, less ionisation occurs and a smaller than normal current flows, triggering the alarm. Lastly, detecting leaks or blockages, a gamma emitting source is inserted into an underground pipe. A detector passed over the ground above the pipe will show an increase in radioactivity at a point of blockage or a decrease in radioactivity where there is a leak. That's all for this video folks, I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a like, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.